Welcome to EDD 939 Module 5. And in this model, module, sorry, not model, we are looking at the aspects of strategic thinking. And um, just as a quick reminder, and I put this in the intro as well, the verbal intro to the module, uh, this is a two week module. So uh, there's going to be more lectures than normally. But you have two weeks to watch them, or if you want, you know, however you want to spread out those two weeks, it's up to you. But um, there are more lectures for this particular module because it's a two week module. And I, I believe uh, the next couple are, are each two weeks as we look at these components of, um, <clears throat> of strategic leadership with strategic thinking. Uh, strategic action and strategic influence. So module five is what we're in here and looking at strategic thinking. And um, in this module, what we're going to be looking at is servant leadership to begin with. How does this concept of strategic thinking connect? I, I believe it does. And we'll be talking about that here in just a minute. And then we're going to talk about the planning aspect. So um, that's kind of more the actual where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, with strategic thinking um, within the planning context. And then we're going to look at those aspects or components of strategic thinking that the book talks about. And I'm not going to rehash what the book says um, because they do a good job, but I'm, I'm, there's some areas that I want to highlight that fall under those categories of scanning, reframing, visioning, and systems thinking. And so we'll be looking at those uh, later on in this module. So let's jump into talking about servant leadership and hopefully you've got the PowerPoint there in front of you that you can refer to and look at as well. So servant leadership. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, how in the world does strategic thinking connect with servant leadership? Um, because we don't always think of those two going together and it's it's not that we think they're mutually exclusive but servant leadership and if you've been through the leadership course with me you've you've heard me say this about servant leadership and one of the the negative i believe perspectives of servant leadership and i had this for a while is that um an individual who is a servant leader they almost walk around at like a higher level of existence than the rest of us right um, they've achieved some sort of higher plane of morality. And so, you know, they almost hover above the earth and walk around in long robes and spout wise sayings. That's not what a servant leader is or does. Uh, servant leadership is a leadership perspective. It's a leadership approach. And personally, I believe servant leadership should be the foundation for any leadership approach we have. Because in a nutshell... As Greenleaf said, who coined the term servant leadership, a servant leader seeks to serve first, then to lead. And so um, as a servant leader, my concern is primarily with those that I am leading. So how does this, how does servant leadership relate to strategic thinking? Um, if you look at that next slide, I ask that question, how does this relate? Well, two ways. First of all, servant leaders consider the present state of the organization and its members. Um, and they consider the future of the organization and its members. So, but back up to the first one, I think that sometimes is, is what we often view servant leaders as doing, that they're looking at the present state of the members. We may not even be considering the organization, but a servant leader is concerned about the organization as a whole. And and understand when I say that I'm I'm not talking about profitability and you know if it's a for uh, if it's a for profit company um, but and even in a nonprofit obviously we can be concerned about profitability. I mean nonprofits have to quote unquote make money, you know what I mean. They have to have enough money to, to function and, and to pay salaries and, and to pay bills and things like that. So um, that's that's part of it. But a servant leader, and if you dig into the servant leadership literature, especially from Robert Greenleaf and then others who came after him, 
um, the the servant leader is very concerned with the overall health and well being of the organization, and and so then taking that down, all of the members who make up the organization are part of that, <clears throat> and so they are looking at how are things currently. <clears throat> Servant leaders are also considering the future of the organization. Will the organization survive after I'm gone? And they have, a servant leader has a long-term view. And we're going to talk more about that here near the end. But that's a key component of servant leadership. They're not just looking at the here and now. They're looking at the long-term viability and and life of the organization for the members benefit and so a servant leader is concerned about both and that's really what strategic thinking is and we've already talked about that some and I want to make sure that I highlight it even more in this module because again and 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 we need to be aware of that as we go into the next lecture in this module when we talk about planning because planning is very future oriented and and so a lot of times when we talk about strategic leadership and strategic thinking and hopefully by now in the course as we're in module five you're starting to break some of that paradigm that strategic leadership and strategic thinking and strategic planning is always about long term three to five years out it's not it's about now and so that's how servant leadership relates because a servant leader is concerned about the now and the future. It's both. Both are, are key aspects here. So then if you'll notice there, we have five dimensions of servant leadership. And um, two professors, um, two professors that I had in my doctoral work here at the University of Nebraska and Lincoln, Jay Barbuto and Dan Wheeler, uh, back in 2006, they started doing some work with um, dimensions of servant leadership. And um, a guy named Larry Spears had come after Robert Greenleaf. Robert Greenleaf um, was the one who coined the term back in the 70s, early 70s, of servant leadership. Um, he wrote a lot about it. <clears throat> Greenleaf was not a researcher, he was a theorist. Um, <clears throat> he worked at, <clears throat> excuse me, um, AT&T back when it was a big conglomerate, and he worked in some other areas. He did some teaching, but he didn't do research on servant leadership. He wrote about servant leadership and um, did a lot of writing about it. Um, they founded the Greenleaf Center for Servant Leadership. And so Larry Spears came along, and Spears worked under Robert Greenleaf until Greenleaf passed away. And then Spears was the director of the Center for um, the Greenleaf Center for Servant Leadership for many, many years. Spears is, is an academic, and so he did some more research, but he also did a lot of writing. And I'm, there is a point here. Larry Spears <coughs> took. Um, Greenleaf's writings about servant leadership and he said you know we need to make it um, accessible and and you know applicable and um, so he took it and he brought out of Greenleaf's writings 11 components of servant leadership and so then more scholars came along Barbudo and Wheeler being two of them and said, you know, 11 components, that's a lot. And some of these sound kind of similar. So Barbudo and Wheeler, um, in their research back in 2006, took Spears' 11 components and ran it through the gamut of doing tests and surveys with individuals and things like that. <clears throat> and what they identified then were five dimensions or components of servant leadership because basically what they found was of the 11 that Spears had identified five really stood out as distinct constructs within their research and so then that's what we have here and I realize some of this may be repeat 
uh, for some of you, but I, I felt it was important to talk about that. So the five dimensions here very quickly are their um, altruistic calling. Altruistic calling, a servant leader has this sense of that there's a higher purpose, that um, I, I need to be serving my fellow humans. And, and so that that isn't necessarily, I think it can be easy to think of an altruistic calling as either something connected with some sort of religious faith-based work or nonprofit humanitarian. That isn't necessarily the case. You can have that sense of altruistic calling and be in a for-profit business. Um, they found that. But it's just this sense that I'm here to serve others. I'm, I'm here to help other people. Um, emotional healing. Emotional healing um, is not you yourself being healed emotionally. What it means is as the leader, I this is kind of the emotional intelligence component. I'm aware that individuals that I work with have wounds and hurts and things, and I want to help them heal as much as possible going through tough times. Um, and there's an important component in there that says, I also recognize when I need to help them get other help. So it isn't that the servant leader puts on their superhero cape and says, I can solve any emotional, psychological problem that you have. That The servant leader is very well aware of their limits, but they're tuned into there are problems potentially going on or people have challenges in their lives. Again, that's that emotional intelligence piece coming in. Persuasive mapping, that's kind of the, the influence and they're able to lay out mental models for individuals and show, hey, here's how we can get there. And then the last two are the ones that, to me, really come into play in connection with strategic thinking and how they fit in. And that's wisdom and organizational stewardship. And so that's the next slide where I say two of them come into play. I mean, the others can be a, 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 a part of it as well. I, I'm not totally discounting those. But I see these two components or dimensions really connecting <clears throat> with the idea of strategic thinking. And, and I want to highlight these because, again, the course is called Strategic Leadership. So as we're thinking about leading, I want us to think about servant leadership in this area. And the one is wisdom. And that's not, you know, a lot of times when we talk about wisdom, <clears throat> We're, we're referring to maybe, you know, you're real smart or, you know, something like that. Or you just seem to, again, have, have the ability to understand people. But what they're talking about in regard to wisdom is it's the ability to notice what is going on inside and outside and see a path forward. And so we would call this situational awareness, if you will. Um, so the servant leader who's demonstrating wisdom can read the signs, um, both inside the organization or, or within their team, if you will, their unit. Because again, we're, we're talking at multiple levels. It doesn't just, this, a servant leader isn't just at the top of the organization, just like a strategic leader isn't just at the top. We want strategic leadership demonstrated throughout. We want servant leadership demonstrated throughout. And so wisdom here says, I can see what's going on, and I'm also aware of what's going on outside of our team or unit or department or organization. And we're going to talk about this when we talk about scanning here in a couple of lectures within this module. That's what we're talking about. And so the servant leader who is demonstrating wisdom has the ability to notice these things and is paying attention and says, now I can see a path forward for us in this. Here's how I think we should move forward. Or gets individuals together and says, hey, here's what I see going on. Do you see that going on too? Yes, we do. What's our path forward? How do we move forward in this situation? That's wisdom. And then the other one is organizational stewardship. And organizational stewardship is summed up as making informed decisions that are in the best interest of the organization as a whole and the members. And, and stewardship is a big part of Greenleaf's writings in regard to servant leadership. And so then this is how it's kind of conceptualized, uh, particularly by Barbuto and Wheeler. 
but making informed decisions that are in the best interest of the organization as a whole and the members. And I think this has to be closely connected with that wisdom idea. But organizational stewardship, to be honest, is one of the components of servant leadership where some people feel like it's no longer servant leadership. Because just as an example, being a good steward of the organization may mean I have to lay individuals off. Now, instantly, and when I've talked with people about this, they balk at that. They said that's not being a servant leader. It could be. Because think of it this way. And and I realize I'm, I'm going to an extreme, right? Because there could be other alternatives. But let's say every alternative has been explored. And what we're looking at is this. What if we have a, an organization with 500 employees? And our options really are down to we either lay off 200 employees or the entire company business will be shut down within a certain amount of time. So I'm faced with two bad choices. I either lay off 200 people or cause the jobs of 500 people, right? So organizational stewardship says I'm going to have to lay off 200 in order to preserve the jobs for the other 300. Now, this again, a good servant leader, obviously at this point they've also looked at, they've made sure that they've cut every cost possible that, you know, as we always hear about, you know, the big wigs, the top level people lay off people and then take bonuses and stuff, right? I mean, the, clearly that's not a, ser if you're doing that, you're, you're not a servant leader, you're just laying people off. But a servant leader has thought about all those things. So that's what we're talking about with organizational stewardship where, and that's a you know a bad example, a negative example, but they're making an informed decision that's in the best interest of the organization and the members. And think about it. What if, too, that that, that town, that community, your, your company is one of the primary employers, right? So your company dying could cause the death of the whole community. And this is where we have ripple effect and systems thinking comes into play. So I just use that as an example to show that's where a servant leader is demonstrating organizational stewardship. And it may mean we have to lay these individuals off to preserve the jobs of these individuals over here. Um, and so now hopefully... If you're being a good servant leader demonstrating wisdom, you haven't allowed it to get to that point, right? You've been making better informed decisions so that you're not in this. But at the same time, we also recognize uh, tragedies, tragic events happen. Um, and we can't always control uh, those things. And so, you know, COVID-19 hit and some places are having to shut down um, and no one could have planned for that. So... That's how it ties in. And then the last thing that I wanted to say here about servant leadership in relation to strategic leadership as a whole is, and, and I mentioned this at the beginning, and we're going to talk about it in the final module, but the authors of, of the book, Becoming a Strategic Leader, emphasize this a lot too, and that's this. Strategic leaders are developing other strategic leaders, and that is at the heartbeat of servant leadership. Greenleaf emphasized this a lot, that servant leaders are constantly seeking to develop other servant leaders. And that's where we see that strong connection in there with strategic leadership. Because by demonstrating these things, I'm helping to develop these qualities and these characteristics in others. <clears throat> Excuse me so that they can grow and develop in their own strategic leadership uh, and in the servant leadership that they are demonstrating as well. So just wanted to do that quick connection there of leadership as a whole to strategic thinking. And again, as I said, particularly, I see the connection here between 
servant leadership, being a servant leader and thinking strategically. And hopefully that helps you connect some of the different concepts together um, and also maybe helps us keep strategic thinking from becoming this cold, hard, calculating thing as we realize there is a very strong human component to it as well. So we will see you in the next lecture.